This video was brought to you by us, Slidebean. We help startups get their ideas investor ready. Check us out at slidebean.com. Nothing lasts forever. Trends come and go, lockdowns as well. So watching our friends drink themselves silly through a screen can get boring. And in these past few years, the term party has taken a whole new meaning. But there was one that embodied partying for Gen Z users. And for a while, it was huge. Even before the lockdown, House Party had become a go-to social network for young users. And now, it's gone. So what happened to House Party? Let's find out today in Company Forensics. The failed origins behind House Party. There was a buzz going on around the 2015 South by Southwest conference in Austin. Everyone talks about one app and one man, Ben Rubin. You are Ben Rubin? Mr. Ben Rubin, the creator of Meerkat. Ben, yeah. good luck to you, my friend. Back then, we were witnessing the revolution of live streaming, and many caught the bug. One great example is Periscope, but we already talked about them. That year in Austin, the darling was Meerkat, and Ben Rubin was the man heading the company that had created it. The startup was called Life on Air, but at the time, it was struggling to breathe. The hype was such that Meerkat was already viral on Twitter and Facebook even two weeks before the event, but Ruben didn't feel the hype. Yes, Meerkat had millions of users, but there was no meaning, there was no connection. Everything was fleeting, and keep this in mind for later, because you see, Meerkat noticed that millions of users signed up for the app, but then they did one, or maybe two live streams, got their dopamine hit, and then stopped using it. I did that. So yes, South by Southwest was a hit, but a brief one. Plus there was already tough competition. For example, Twitter had acquired Periscope for $100 million. And a little bit of competition is fine, but Twitter wasn't playing nice. Hours after acquiring Periscope, Twitter reduced Ruben's access to graphs and users. So promoting Meerkat would be even more challenging. And here's where things get very interesting. What do you think Ruben did? First of all, he was chill about Twitter's blatant effort to cut the competition. Not happy, but chill. And then he decided to ditch Meerkat. And he pivoted the original idea before it was too late. So House Party is born. Fleeting interest and pressure from giants can be enough to make you turn away. And Life on Air did precisely that. The company used all of its technology to create something completely different. And that takes a lot of guts. So the new idea was video chat that allowed up to eight people to talk simultaneously. And now that we look back on that, it makes kind of sense, so why didn't anybody think of it? On a social network, you add friends and you separate them into different chats. And Ruben's goal was to create meaningful connections and presence opposed to Meerkat. But what if it failed? Many former employees have said that they felt Life on Air had given up too soon, so the company went the opposite way. Total secrecy. Life on Air didn't even put its own name on it. Instead, they used the COO's husband name because he didn't have any social networks. With such a secretive start, failure was an option. Employees visited college campuses and explained to students how the app worked. And the idea was a hit. Students created homework or even game groups. Though it wasn't as big a hit as Meerkat, it found a core group of fans that loved using it. In fact, most users went back on it frequently, staying up to an hour. And within months, they had users in all 50 states. But things started getting tough. Challenges arise. Live on Air was never a big company. In the Meerkat days, it had 11 employees. When House Party launched, that number rose to 20, but still they couldn't keep up with demand and the app kept crashing. And things had happened too fast. From Meerkat's launch to House Party's debut, it had been just five or six months. With such radical changes, the investors who had dished out $14 million were eager for results. And then of course, Google and Facebook and Snapchat realized, oh, live video chats, that's cool, let's get the heat on. So Live On Air hired a former Twitter engineer to help them grasp some of these challenges. And things moved pretty fast in this company. Six months after the new hire, the company had managed to straighten out its course. By mid-2016, the app had a million daily users. Plus, it had fueled enough interest for investors to keep believing in the idea. And with such successful numbers, Live On Air raised $52 million in funding. So once again, they had managed to breathe, but then they noticed something interesting a new use for House Party. One of the greatest appeals House Party had was that it was free. There was no subscription, no ads, and that's great for users, especially young ones who don't have a lot of money. But it's a big challenge for a company that needs to make a profit. So around 60% of House Party users were under the age of 24. And most of them used to use the app to play games like Fortnite, watch Netflix, and even do charades. But why not create their own game? So in late 2018, House Party began offering games like word guessing. Out of the eight users, one couldn't see the word and the user had to guess. 
Well, it came with a few free word packs. You wanted you wanted extra words, you had to pay 99 cents. Then Live On Air partnered with Heads Up, a successful charades game, and they even got Ellen DeGeneres to promote it. So House Party didn't have impressive user numbers but it had loyalty. Every user logged on for around 60 minutes, which is a lot of minutes in today's competitive tech world. Under a new home. House Party consistently ranked high in the downloads department, but it was still a tiny fish in a big pond. So Live On Air introduced new features like desktop compatibility and screen sharing. And these changes weren't enough. Live On Air hadn't revealed subscriber numbers, but there had been a steep decline between 2018 and 2019. There were 35 million House Party downloads, but between Q1 2018 and Q1 2019, downloads went from 3.7 to 2.9 million. Still, one company wanted an Epic Games those Fortnite people. And it made perfect sense. Everybody used House Party to live stream Fortnite games. Terms weren't disclosed, but we're sure it was good pay. There's something I wanna highlight here. After the purchase, Epic said that it would leave the app alone for now. And this is important for later. A lockdown boost. Gen Z's suffered in the pandemic, as we all did. At an age in which you're supposed to roam free and experiment and get drunk, or whatever they do these days, they were all under lockdown. That's that's not cool. And House Party was. House Party saw a spike in downloads. It reached 50 million downloads worldwide in March 2020 alone, 17 million of them in the US. In some markets, this was 70 times normal. And as a result, it became the number one social media app in 82 countries, including the US. Apps like Zoom and Teams, they were just too serious. Skype missed out on this party long ago. So this app aimed straight at this bored demographic that could only play video games. Plus, even when older users signed up, all they did was gaming. And it didn't stop there. Epic took full advantage of this growth, and it even created a festival. It's an all-out three-day event. Katy Perry, John Legend, Snoop all participated. But you could also see magic tricks and even work out with Alicia Keys. The event was, of course, a hit. So in April 2020, Epic announced that House Party would have an exclusive Fortnite mode for all of those fans. But there was one problem. This lockdown, <laughs> luckily, wasn't going to last forever. A quick death. On September 9th, 2021, last week, Epic Games announced that it would shut down House Party. The decision came swift and brutal. The company even withdrew the app from the stores immediately. However, those who had downloaded the app could still use it until October. The world scratched its head. What happened? A year ago, House Party was this massive hit. Just a year ago. But we're not locked down anymore. Epic Games have been very secretive about the shutdown, but let's look back at what they said when they acquired it. First, Epic Games didn't have a plan beyond leaving House Party as it is. Then, when House Party shut down, Epic Games said that it could no longer give House Party the attention it required. Couldn't or wouldn't. After all, House Party's technology is now in all Fortnite products. There's no doubt that it'll be in other social and game products. And then there's the boost that they got from the pandemic. At that time, it was easy to keep House Party alive. It was fueling itself. But when people started going out to are outside, House Party lost its purpose. So now it's just left to die. House Party was a flash in the pan. Ruben ditched the idea quickly at first, and now Epic did too as well. So sometimes it makes sense to ditch what doesn't work before it stops working. By the way, if you feel that your slides are not working, don't ditch them. Just send them to us, we can help. We help startups present to investors. Getting your ideas investor ready doesn't have to be a challenge. Thanks to our pitch stick builder. And if you need help in writing or designing your slides, we, as in we, our team, we can help you with that entire process and even help you with those financial models. Contrary to your house party, our calls are still very much alive. So if you need any guidance, we have team experts available for one-on-one -on -one sessions as well. We want you to pitch your company with confidence. So check us out at slidebean.com or click that link in the video description. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next week.